Good morning, Trinity Baptist Church. Happy Saturday. Uh, this morning we are in Mark chapter 10, and I think the main thing it's good for us to notice as we read it is that things are really picking up. People are um, gathering around Jesus. He's getting close to Jerusalem. Some people are following him. Some people decide they cannot follow him. Certainly not into Jerusalem, where they know it's going to be risky for him and his followers. I'm just going to read the passage today. Um, and I think as we get the sense of what that feels like and how the momentum of this story is building, that will set us up really well to hear um, our Palm Sunday sermon tomorrow morning, uh, which will be coming to you from my friend Jim. Uh, this is Mark chapter 10. And he left there and went to the region of Judea and beyond the Jordan, and crowds gathered to him. And again, as was his custom, he taught them. And Pharisees came up, and in order to test him, asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? And he answered them, What did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of divorce and to send her away. And Jesus said to them, Because of your hardness of heart, he wrote you this commandment. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let not man separate. And in the house, the disciples asked him again about this matter. And he said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. And they were bringing children to him, that he might touch them. And the disciples rebuked them. But when Jesus saw it, he was indignant and said to them, Let the children come to me. Do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. And he took them in his arms and blessed them, laying his hands on them. And as he was setting out on his journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one's good except God alone. You know the commandments. Do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not bear false witness, do not defraud, honor your father and mother. And he said to him, Teacher, all these I've kept from my youth. And Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, You lack one thing. Go, sell all that you have and give it to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come, follow me. Disheartened by the saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. And Jesus looked around and said to the disciples, How difficult it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the, the disciples were amazed at his words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how difficult it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. And they were exceedingly astonished and said to him, Then who could be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, With man it is impossible, but not with God, for all things are possible with God. Peter began to say to him, See, we've left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I say to you, there is no one who has left house, or brothers, or sisters, or mother, or father, or children, or lands for my sake, and for the gospel, who will not receive a hundredfold, now in this time, houses, and brothers, and sisters, and mothers, and children, and lands, with persecutions, and, in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last first. And they were on the road, going up to Jerusalem. And Jesus was walking ahead of him, and they were amazed. Those who followed were afraid. And taking the twelve again, he began to tell them what was to happen to him, saying, See, we're going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death and deliver him over to the Gentiles. And they will mock him and spit on him and flog him and kill him. And after three days he will rise. And James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came up to him and said to him, Teacher, we want to ask you to do for us whatever we ask of you. <laughs> and he said to them, What do you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left in your glory. And Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or to be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? And they said to him, We are able. And Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand, or at my left, is not mine to grant. But it is for those for whom it has been prepared. And when the ten heard it, they began to be indignant at James and John. 
And Jesus called them to him and said to them, You know that those who are considered rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. But it shall not be so among you. But whoever would be great among you must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. And they came to Jericho. And as he was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a great crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind beggar, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and said, Call him. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he's calling you. And throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. And Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said to him, Rabbi, let me recover my sight. And Jesus said to him, Go your way. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he recovered his sight and followed him on the way. I said we would just read the passage, but one verse did stand out to me that I can't not comment on since I don't know when I'll go through Mark with you again, Trinity. There's this verse, um, verse 45. I took a class on Mark in seminary. Uh, and I remember we would go, we would try to translate the book, we would talk about the scholarship, and it, at, at times it could be a very technical class, but there was one class session where my professor, Stephen Whitmer, paused the class and said, we're not even in chapter 10, but I was just reading and praying about this passage, and it's one I think we need to all hear. And he read this verse, verse 45, For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. That verse has been so challenging and encouraging and heartening and difficult for me in the six years since I took that course. Because when I feel frustrated, when I feel like my life's not fair or other people should be doing more for me, God often reminds me of Mark 10:45, that um, this is the way my Lord is. And so this is something I must remember, that the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. And uh, we have not yet given as much as he gave, but we're following him <laughs> and learning to give more and more, even as he is the one who gives us all we need. Please continue to pray for one another, and please continue to pray for our world.